So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can replace your DS shell because it's very common for your DSs to break. Although mine is fully working, as you can see, the shell is completely smashed and the hinges are broken. So I would recommend buying a full kit just so it comes with all the bits, but you can mix and match using the new and old rubbers, it doesn't matter too much. So the tools you will need is a plastic prying tool, if you prefer to be plastic, also some fine tip tweezers, a tri-wing screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver. First thing you want to do is use your tri-wing screwdriver to remove the battery cover. And then once it's there, you can use your prying tool to remove the cover and to remove the battery itself. It's important to do this first. Now that that's out, we have some tri-wing screws. There's six of them located in total, two in the battery compartment and four everywhere else. Now that those screws are removed, you should be able to just lift up the shell and it'll pop out. There's no cables here, which is great. So now let's move on to disconnecting these FFC cables and the antenna. So starting off at the right hand side, you should be able to use your plastic prying tool to lift up the lock. Once the lock is lifted, you should be able to slide out the cable. Underneath this cable, there's two more, which we have to do the same thing on. For this one, actually, the locking mechanism is both sides. So this is why tweezers are quite handy for this one. And now for the second cable, doing the exact same thing. And then once this is done, we can move over to the other side. So that is done. So let's just pop out this antenna cable. It's easily done. Remove the lock for this. And this we can actually leave like this because when we take out the board, it'll come out with it. So to remove the main board from the shell, there is four Phillips screws we have to remove, three visible on the board and one by the game cartridge slot. So once those are removed, we should be able to start pulling this out. Now that's all out, let's remove all the buttons and the rubbers. This is pretty easy to do, nothing's tied down, so that will be done now. Now that's done, we want to move over to the actual screen itself, which requires us to tear up the foam to reveal the cable. Now that the cable's exposed, you should be able to carefully pull it off, it's stuck with some adhesive. Now that's done, if you pull it back slightly, there's actually a Phillips screw here that we need to remove. Now that's done, if you flip it over, there should be a little... Uh, oh, okay, so my, my screen's fallen out, so that's no worries. We've skipped a step there, but if it doesn't fall out, you want to put some pressure on the screen either side, and it'll pop out. That's fine. So moving on to where I was, I need to remove this tape. Now that the cover's off and the tape's off, we could feed the cable through the shell. Once you've done that, let's concentrate on the top, which is removing the four Phillips screws. These are covered with the little protective rubber things. And to take these off, just use the fine tip tweezers and dig under and pull out. So I'm going to remove all the screws from each side. Now that it's done, you might need to use your plastic prying tool, but in my case I don't because it's broken. You should be able to pull it apart. So I'm going to do that now. Mine just comes off. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my Phillips screwdriver and remove the two screws holding these boards in place. So that's the first one gone. And then we can just use some tweezers to remove the speaker. The second one gone. This one you want to be more careful with because as you can see, there are some cables connected. So let's remove those. Again, using the same efforts as before. And once these are pulled out, don't pull the board because there is another one underneath this one. Now that those are out, remove the speaker. Now that the speaker's gone, let's remove the screen itself. Again, using the same effort as before, just pry it at the sides and you should be able to pull it out. So let's replace the DS hinges in the original DS. So you need to get your hinges. And the first thing you're going to need to do, as you can see, there's two parts to this hinge. There's a metal bit and a black bit. As you can see on the metal bit, there is like a bump either side. This bump needs to match the black plastic bit. So as you can see, it looks like it's three lines. So looking at the other side as well, it should match on both sides like so. So set up your hinges like this so that we can put it in the case. Looking at the second one, the smaller one, again, this needs to be set both sides so that it all lines up like so. By matching up one side, yours must match up the other. Getting the top part of the shell, so you have two bits we need to put them in. So the long one goes to this side of the shell and the short one goes to this side of the shell. So to put them in, you should be able to, there's some notches inside the shell. So you just want to twist it around and pop in the metal bit first. And you want to match it up like so. I've put a picture on the screen. Once they're in, you should see that it's only the plastic bit that's poking out. So you then want to grab your other half of the shell and then we want to actually pop it in 
and face down so it's closed in on itself. This makes it a lot easier to put it in. Then once you have it lined up, you want to use quite a bit of force, but be careful about it and push both hinges in. They should pop into place. So there we go, they are in and unfortunately I've scratched up the shell. Most of this is probably okay because it's going to be covered, but do be careful. I think this one will be viewable. And there we go, we have done this part and replaced the hinges successfully. And as you can see, it should have a nice, there we go, a nice snap to it. And that's how you know you've done it right. So now that we've done that, I'm going to use a mixture of the old and the new buttons. Uh, it doesn't matter which ones you use, if they're old, you might want to clean them. So here is the shell with the hinges in. So now you need to put the screen in first for the top. The orientation for this is on the right hand side at this angle. That's where the cables come out. It's by the Nintendo DS logo. Now this is the tricky part. You've got to feed this cable carefully back through. It takes a bit of jiggling. Just be patient with it. Take your time and don't force it. We don't want to break this at this stage. Now that's through. You want to push it all the way through. And now let's get to placing the speakers. So I've put the speaker back in. And then I'm going to put the board back in. So we're going to connect the cables back up. Lock them in place. Put the board in. So just to do that, you flip the board back underneath and then we want to put a Phillips screw in the screw hole. And now moving on to the other side, let's put the speaker in. And then for the board, which just stretches across the screen with the cables. And then we need a Phillips screw in this hole. Get the antenna cable and you want to just feed it through the same hole. Now that's done, you want to get the top of your lid and just clip it into place. Now you want to hold it and open it so you can put the four Phillips screws into the top half of the shell. Now that those are in place and it's all secure, we can now put the rubbers. The bumpy one goes to the top two and the flat goes to the bottom two. Now for the other side. Now that we've got the rubbers in, let's put the screen protector on. So this is your chance to clean off any debris from the screen. So for the screen itself, there's several layers of adhesive we have to remove. So you might be wondering, well, wow, that screen's really scratched up. But actually, there's another layer of plastic to protect it. So with that removed, we can now place it in and apply some light pressure all around to make sure it's stuck down. So that is the top half pretty much complete. So you want to get your hinge cover put it over as you can see there was an opening and that will go over the actual cable itself like so then flipping over the ds we want to put the phillips screw into there now that's done we can put all the buttons back into place do not forget the led light pipe i have forgotten this many times myself in the past it just goes down here there we go that's in and now let's go over putting the rest of the buttons in the x button b button the a button the y button the start button the select button d-pad power button this will be the right trigger button so for this there's a little hole and there's a spring you have to kind of push up to fit in the slot it takes a bit of fiddling to do but once it's in it's in left shoulder button and now i'm actually going to use the new rubbers for this and you want to have them face in up with the little pointy bits and not the flat circle bits and they can only go in one place d-pad rubber now this is a great opportunity to clean your screen if it's needed mine definitely is once you clean your screen if needed you now should be able to push it in to your shell this might require a tiny amount of force for it to fit now that all of that's in we want to put in the main board so you want to feed these cables through the little hole make sure to feed all three through and then push the board down as you can see all three are fed through and now we can continue with the assembly so i'm going to hold the board in place by putting the phillips screws back in not forgetting the game cartridge one now at this point I could say play everything in reverse but I'll just put these cables back in. Now for the left hand side let's put the cable in and the antenna cable. With the antenna cable you want to just pop it around this pillar there's a little place for it you should be able to push it down. Before we put the bottom on you want to get this little tiny nut and you want to put it into this plastic hole over here. So it requires a bit of force. You can see here, that's the lip, has to be over that. Then once we've done this, we want to put the bottom shell piece on. Now let's put the six driving screws into the shell. Once 
one of the last things we need to do is stick on the sticker right here nice in the middle doesn't look too bad i must admit and of course on the top of the shell we need to put the nintendo logo on and what's weird about this one is for some reason the original one looks really nice but on the replica the e is slightly raised and i have no idea what that's about it just looks really weird but i guess it's an aftermarket shell now put your battery back in and then put the battery cover on this should just clip into place and then screw it down for good measure now one of the really last things to do is put on the rubber covers I find it very interesting that unlike the top part of the DS, it doesn't actually cover any screws. And there you have it, you've successfully replaced your Nintendo DS shell. Though some comments that I don't like about this shell is because it's been painted, you can see the underside looks blue. So really this is a blue and silver, it just looks awful. And another thing is, there's a random scratch here already on my shell, I did not do this. I would happily admit to it because I did do that damage there, which is slightly visible, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was before. And it actually works and the DS hinge works and it's not going to break, whereas before it was very high risk. 